Bakugan Resurgence is the second booster set of the Bakugan Pro game, originally planned for release May 15, 2019, but on March 29, 2019, Ruben Saints from Battle Brawl Z found the set in Walmart, and it was not even like an hour after it was announced. When it was announced, there was so much hype in the community because not only were we seeing new cards expanding a brand new game at the time, but also Resurgence introducing new EVO cards that help undervalue Bakugan by even a bit and also introduced reroll as a mechanic and even introduced new starter decks with new Bakugan including my favorite Darkest Hydronet Ultra <laughs> and there were a lot of cards that to this day still remain a must have in many people's decks and collections. So let's go over the top 10 best cards from Bakugan Resurgence. Number 10, Blinding Ink. Blinding Ink is a two cost action card that negates any action card that costs three energy or less. Considering there are plenty of action cards that make a huge impact on a game at a low cost like Nature's Power, Stone Skin, Consort, and so on, having Blinding Ink a two cost negate is a very good tech in your deck for Aquas builds. It's only one less cost than Triple Blast Cannon, but it can help you out of a sticky situation. Blinding Ink is available in the Darkest Hydrant Ultra Starter deck in two copies, so already you will have decent access to it. It's very good for early game advantage and I do recommend picking this card up when you can. Number 9, Chaos Titan Ilias Ultra. Chaos Titan Nilius Ultra is a 6 cost 1107, but on Domination, it costs 3 less to play. This card can potentially be brought out turn 3 or an easy play later on provided you meet Domination requirements. The Battle Planet Nilius Ultra toy is already a very good toy to use because of its ability to double core. Having this card really helps get you out at 1100 beater faster. This is a very good card for its time and definitely quite the beast for early game. Also, when it was released, it has a misprint where it didn't state how much less energy it was to play. Number 8, Darkest Titan Tertonium Ultra. Darkest Titan Tertonium Ultra is a 4 cost 1015 and when you play this, you must discard your whole hand. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why would this be in the top 10 best list when the price to play it is discarding your whole hand? Well, first off, it costs 4 to play, so it's not really too difficult to get out. Being a 1015 beater, it can go up to 1650 since Tertonium brings blue shield with him, so it's got the stats, but mainly because this card is a Fury Enabler, the keyword ability for Pyrus that grants bonus skills based on having no cards in your hand, kind of like Infernity from Yu-Gi-Oh. It would help if we move on to the next card on the list since it's relevant to Tertonium. Number 7, Pyrus Hyper Halcor Ultra. Iris Hyper Halcor Ultra is a 5 cost 1505 Fury plus 20 damage. Already he has a 1500 B power which at the time was a very big deal and could be swinging for 25 damage. By the time this boy comes out that's already like 90% of the opponent's deck just gone. Mixing this card with Darkest Titan Tertonium Ultra was a popular combo at the time that made Fury very relevant. The ideal team was Darkest Tertonium Ultra, Pyrus Halcor Ultra, and either Pyrus Serpentis Ultra or Orlis Dragon Ultra, whichever Bakugan you wanted that could synergize corely with them. The important thing was getting this combo off because you could inflict serious damage to your opponent, especially with blue shield cores, or if your opponent is trying to weasel his way out of the B power game, you could use Might of Sin or Mac. It was just insane. Number 6, Darkest Hyper Nilius Ultra. Darkest Hyper Nilius Ultra is a 3 cost 508 and on Orange Shield plus 800 B power. So at best it could go up to 1708 and given the Nilius toy's ability to double core, probably could go up even more. Hyper Nilius Ultra was the early play Evo that Darkest Nilius Ultra really needed and served as a pretty good example of an Evo card that could improve on an already good Bakugan. 8 damage makes it a pretty good beater and I think this card was more hyped when Magnus was practically the first one in the show to evolve his Bakugan, showing off Hyper Evolution. At a 3 cost, you could potentially be able to get this out turn 3 so yeah it's pretty good. Number 5, Maximus Webum Ultra. Maximus Webum Ultra is a 7 cost 1214, and if you miss a roll with it, you can keep rolling until it opens. This Webum Evo not only can hit really hard with high B power and damage, but you can also guarantee an open no matter what. Granted, if you don't land on a bad core, this Webum has the potential to hurt your opponent very badly. You can get this out with Dan Kuzo, Divine Intervention, or because it's a Ventus, just mana ramp until you get this out. I believe Maximus Webum is currently the first and only card right now that can guarantee an open no matter what your rolling skill level is. Though I can't really criticize your ability to roll Webum, have you seen the ball design? Without the Maximus Evo, your Webum will do this! 
Spider ball, spider ball, handles better aerosol. Watch it flip on its side. How the hell has it not died? Watch out! Here comes the spider ball. Hit a wall, ricochets. Stats are way too low to play. Off the core, watch it fly. Laws of physics don't apply. Watch out! In the sky is the spider ball. Quagmire wishes his balls can do all this giggity! But right now, I just want to keep this freaking close pass! Spider ball, spider ball, love of God, don't play spider ball. Making turns like it's drunk, get blocked by that nilius punk. This ball, it is not good at all, so have your doctor on call, cause you played spider ball! Okay, all jokes aside, the Maximus Evo is actually very good, and I'd recommend getting some if you can, because I think these are very hard to find still. Number 4, Shun Kazami. A 3-cost hero with the continuous ability when you open a Bakugan, you may draw one card. This card is good because of the wording within its text. It's when you open a Bakugan. So, this is not exclusive to your roll phase. If you play the many re-roll cards that is also included in this set, and succeed in opening your Bakugan with them, you can draw potentially more multiple times a turn, though drawing cards still gets you closer to death in this game, so it's still good hand advantage to have. Shun is also available in the starter deck, so you can have access to him easily. I believe he is still a common staple in many decks today. Number 3, Quick Fire, a zero cost reroll that also burns the opponent for one. What more can you say about this? This burns your opponent while also giving you a second chance if you miss, or unlocking on open abilities like Emily, Jenkins, Dan, Hyper Servanty, Shun, so on and so on, while also hurting the opponent. Seriously, this is the definition of perfect re-roll card that I believe people still use to this day. Number 2, Auralis Hypertrox. This card, a 2 cost 606, Shadow Strike, and when you play an action card on this, plus 300 and plus 4. This made its way onto the meta at the time because low cost reroll cards were able to trigger this guy. Since this guy has Shadow Strike, your opponent can't nerf him either since that would only help him gain more power with it being a low cost. The developer have accidentally created quite a monster with this card. And the number one card from Resurgence is... Super Fuel. A one cost must re-roll your Bakugan, but if it opens, the next card you play this turn costs three less to play. Super Fuel is the best card from this set, not just because of how rare it is to obtain or that it's a good re-roll card, but also because of how much damage it can do with it being able to reduce play costs by three. You can second turn Dan Kuzo, first turn Shunkazami, Nilius Ultra, get out expensive evos quicker, play Song of Fire, play boosters at no cost that could save you, it's chaotic how this card being able to reduce play cost can do with just being a one cost. Get a play set at this and never let go of them because not only are they extremely expensive on the secondary market but they also are able to be fit in practically any deck with Pyrus. There's so much you can do with this card that it's practically a video by itself. So yeah, Super Fuel is expensive and very good, don't let any that you come across out of your sight. To this day still remains one of the most sought after cards in the game. Thank you for watching this episode of Baku Talk Analysis. If there's something else you want to talk about, leave it in the comment section below, and I'll be sure to get to it. Also, guys, a little quick announcement. This is going to be the last video I do for the next couple of weeks because I'm going to be going away to San Antonio, and I won't be able to make videos until I get back. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to be out of contact for a little bit, so please don't spam my comments saying that Geogun Rising episodes have been uh, released or anything like that. I will review them once they have aired on Teletoon and once I get back. So, once I get back, I will try my best to get those videos out to you guys as soon as possible but uh yeah uh i love you guys hopefully you guys take care thank you so much for supporting me and remember thank god for rapid fire all right i'm out bye